Hi everyone, welcome to I think my last video on historical lies sequence for a while. This one is going to be on the strange panorama of San Francisco in 1878. And the reason I'm going to stop here is I, I think we've done as a community a very good job in digging into and showing that the standard historical narrative is quite obviously a lie. And I don't think we really need to continue to put more energy into that. There's no point in just <clears throat> trying to unravel another story or another building or another, what, what's the point? We know it's a lie. Unless you can unravel the real background behind it and the real actual detail, other than just to say, this is a lie, but we don't know the truth. Well, that's, we don't need to do more of that. But I'm finishing this one because I said I would I would uh, present it for you and for um, Layla over at the We Warrior blog. We were going to do a combined thing where she would do a blog on San Francisco and I was going to do this video. Um, but she, in the course of her research, wound up going into a few different other things. Uh, her website is below and she, she is talking about, uh, I think she will talk a bit about some San Francisco photographs in her next blog coming up. But here, I'm going to try to keep this to under 10 minutes. I don't think it needs to be long because I'm just going to show you a few photographs. That's all that really needs to be done is show you a few photographs and that should be enough to destroy the narrative completely at that point. And I don't think I need to overburden you with more. If you want to read more detail, you can go into my book, <clears throat> right? Exposing the Expositions, where there's an entire chapter on San Francisco. I go into detail what I'm saying and the fairs. And, but for now, short overview. And, and what's important is we're going to be looking at this picture uh, as part of a pan panorama that came in 1878. We'll be looking at this very closely. This is, these are some shots of San Francisco, 1878. So this is important. This is where we're going to get to in about five minutes. But we start here. And this is supposedly the city of San Francisco in 1848, when it was still called Yerba Buena, and it was owned by the Spanish, or I guess at this point it had just been taken over by the Americans in this supposed painting. So this is what is supposed to be there in 1848. Now we know that that's not actually true. <clears throat> we know there had to be more than this there. Because it was a small Spanish city, we have, we have uh, information of hotels that had been there. We have information of a, of like a, you know, a shipping community, a gambling community. So we know there was something there. It certainly wasn't this, but the other point of it is, it's not much more than that, supposedly. This is, this is the story. Then we have, in the course of three years, we have first in 1848, uh, a whole bunch, uh, or in 1846, we have uh, all of North, Car all of North Car California claimed by the U.S. in the Mexican-American War and supposedly take over the city without firing a shot, raising the American flag in the town plaza, uh, which will be renamed after the ship, the Portsmouth, and shortly thereafter, 240 Mormon migrants, led by Sam Brandon, arrive on the ship, the Brooklyn. Which is interesting because that was three weeks after the city had been captured by the Americans. So it seems coincidental that basically three weeks at just after the city had been captured by the U.S. Navy, all of a sudden these Mormons show up by ship. Within a year, we had changed the name to San Francisco. Uh, which again is odd because the new U.S. settlers chose a Spanish name, right? St. Francis, San Francisco, for a small town that had previously been Spanish that they just captured. And that makes no sense at all, <clears throat> right? English people, when they came to the colonies, supposedly renamed their cities like New York, New Hampshire, after where they came from. In 1848, then, and again, Plymouth Square, which we'll see in a moment, is where the official announcement of the gold rush happened. And lo and behold, uh, connected as well, oddly, to the Mormons and to Sam Brandon, the gold rush begins and we have a rush of cowboys and miners heading to California. Okay, so we saw 1850, let's look at uh, 1848, let's look at some real photographs. These are from 1851. This is the famous Portsmouth Square, the, the same place that is supposed to have had the flag raised to... Uh, commemorate the new U.S. takeover of the, of the city. Okay, here's San Francisco Harbor in 1851. And okay, there's a little bit of building there, but even this, even this, we're supposed to believe that we went from the original 1848 painting, 
to this in three years, all from miners, cowboys, and some Mormons building these kind of structures into the city in three years. That obviously makes no sense. More so, we have this fun lithograph by John Pendergrast. And this is from eight, this is showing the 1850 statehood celebration, again in the same Plymouth Square. So there's Plymouth Square that we, show, we showed earlier. Here's the Plymouth Square in the lithograph from the same year, roughly. So where are all these buildings on the left? Where are these giant uh, Greco-Roman uh, huge column structures? And I mean, look at the size of the people compared to the buildings. Like, there's no way you could miss this if you're going to take a photograph, of an actual photograph. Wouldn't, wouldn't you be photographing that? So <clears throat> the question is, what are the photographs trying to tell us of San Francisco? What are the lithographs trying to tell us? What's there? What isn't there? All we know is, obviously, the growth of San Francisco and what was there when it was taken over is a question mark, but we come to these. And these are the panorama of Edward Muirbridge. There, it turns out to be seven, and of course it makes a circular viewpoint. He went to a point of San Francisco and took it, took a circular photograph. This is the same guy who in 1893 would give a moving picture display at the Chicago Columbian Exposition. So he fits right into all of our historical narrative. That he's, he's at the forefront of doing this. And I just want you to know, now we're, as we're looking through, so that was the first image, here's the second image, and again I'm going to show all the, let's just show all the images first. So we're just going to take these through again, the seven pieces of the panorama. Now there's a, a website, a uh, website, there's a, a, a YouTube video below that just shows the panorama in very slow motion. So if you want to see it as it would actually look uh, continuous, you can watch that below. But here's what you're seeing. This is, this is San Francisco, 1878, so they tell us. Um, now, how do you build that? How does, a, how does a group of miners and cowboys, right, go in roughly 30 years, 30 total years, to build what you have to say is a population of, what, 500,000, maybe? And look at, look at some of the finish on this. We've got huge towers, domes, facades. Um, look at the structure here, that this cathedral. It looks right like it should be in central Moscow. Can you really build this in 30 years, that ornate, this kind of finish, this kind of masonry with miners and cowboys? I don't think so. And when I asked this to my building contractor friend, he was also very clear that, no, this is absolutely impossible to build this in 30 years at the time power, unless, again, A, they have a technology they're not supposed to have, or B, much of the city was already there long ago and nobody was actually building it. There pretty much is no other answer. And in fact, the gold rush might have just been a fabricated story to explain why, pe and why people and to get people to move really quickly from the east to the west and start filling up these pretty much mostly empty cities that had just been found on the west coast. I think this, panora <clears throat> this panorama is one of the most destructive pieces of evidence to the standard historical narrative that we have. Because it literally is impossible. I mean, think about it. Think about how much how much logistics you would need and this is not wood this is not this is not just even wood this is stone stone and marble construction think of the transportation with again there's no roads out there there's no problem you know they're just they're, they haven't even built the transcontinental railway yet so how are they even getting where are they getting the stone from how are they transporting it you're telling me they transported all of this stone in 30 years on horseback and then they managed to put it all up and build it and perfectly finish it because look at look at the at the at the images really closely again like really take time to look at these there's no construction in any of the photos not one piece of construction anywhere in the whole of San Francisco is going on meanwhile this is supposed to be a boom town right people are supposed to still in the 1870s they should be moving there en masse <clears throat> but there's they're not building anything like not one thing not one thing's being painted there, there's no sign that anything is going on in this city at all in fact and this is spooky for the, again, for the pictures of this period. You see a lot of this, like in these pictures from Leningrad and St. Petersburg, right? There's no people. There's no people, there's no horses, there's no nothing. Now, of course, in our new goofy pandemic that we're going through, you could take photographs of modern cities with nobody in them, right? Literally, there'd be nobody in the street. But if you discount that as the answer for what you're looking at, then how do you have... Nothing but, okay, if you look really closely in the photograph, you will see about 50 horse and carts, and you will see about 100 people scattered around. Where are all the people? And the standard explanation is that cameras had to take 
10 or 15 minute exposure so the photographer would keep people out of the scenery photos. Really? You could keep 200,000 people and probably what, 40, 50,000 horses out of a photograph for 10 or 15 minutes? There would have to be a ton of blurring in these photos from people and horses moving around, but there's no blurring, no blurring. So I think we have to be very clear. There are no people in this city when the panorama is being taken. I think that's the only qualified explanation we have. There are no people in the city when this is going on. So when was this photo taken? Was this photo really taken in 1878 or was it presented as being in 1878? Was it something taken long? Was it, was it in fact taken when the city was captured by the Americans? I know it's running. Was, I, was it uh, taken when the city was captured first by the Americans in 1848 and then they just <clears throat> waited until they had enough people there, had enough time to make it, make, make it uh, a good story that it's been built and now they have this. I think I don't really need to go any further. I mean, you're more than welcome to read my book and read the chapter on it, but I, I don't think I don't think you need to say much more. The, the, the photographs are pretty obvious. And it, it's obvious that the story of the building of San Francisco, and particularly the building of the West at all, whether it be Salt Lake City or any city in the Western United States, is obviously a lie once you take it apart. Same with things like Australia and New Zealand when you start looking through how fast again convicts and you know poor colonists managed to build massive structures all throughout Australia and New Zealand. These are really, really destructive pieces of historical evidence. So I'll just stop there because like I say, I don't think I need to say anymore. I don't think we really need to dig into more historical narrative at this point. We have things that we need to focus on now. And uh, a couple of emails I got from people, um, you know, were reminding me of in some cases, the, the last few videos are, had a, quite an effect on them because it was quite, um, it's quite heavy material that I've been providing lately. And, and I don't want to shy away from talking about the nightmare uh, aspect of the, of the matrix, the, the nightmare aspect of the dream. But of course, that doesn't mean that's the only aspect of it. This is a dual reality. And there is a, there is a different side. There is a uplifting side. There is a positive side. There's a hopeful side. And I'm going to do my next video as a very positive, um, a positive look at the matrix again, a little bit, not so much like I did with between this, but a little different. So that's going to come up on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. We're going to look at we're going to look at the dream, in, um, in because we have to keep everything balanced. You have to keep you have to keep both sides of looking into your standard reality as clear as possible. And remember, I'm just doing the best I can to provide some information of my own life, my own experiences, my own research, my own time. But that doesn't mean what I'm presenting is right. You know, it doesn't mean that I have the answers and you should agree with whatever I say. You shouldn't. You should take what I say as perhaps as possibility because it's interesting to you. And then you have to start filtering it through your own experience and your own research and your own knowledge. And if there's a subject that <clears throat> is just something you can't answer, you don't know if the answer is yes or no, then how could you how could you yourself look deeper into yourself or deeper into something to perhaps find an answer that you can be satisfied with as it's your answer it's not an answer from outside of yourself right the answer has to be an answer that's within others can just point you in a direction of what you would like to try to get an answer to or what you would like to try to look within and and without in a more focused manner so that's what's coming up in a couple of days. Um, there's, I mean, you can go and look at San Francisco in unbelievable detail. The, the earthquake, the, the 1915 fair. Actually, there's a number of world's fairs in San Francisco. There's just a ton you can dig into on that. But I'll leave that there. We'll see you at the next video in a few days. Cheers.